Uh, farmers find it very important that their uh, next generation and the generation afterwards will also have a farm to look after. And we consistently start to grow cows that actually have positive values, which means they're more valuable than a heifer. We believe that most of the negative consequences in the transition period actually are response of immune activation. Efficient farms had less callings and first lactation. This is well illustrated by uh, this study. This comes from the Place Here Lab in uh, Canada. In uh, Holland, the top 1% is on five lactations. Welcome to today's online conference about Healthy Life, a new digital platform where you can find all the information you need about making sustainable dairy farming more profitable. All the farmers that I uh, spoke to recently, uh, they consistently uh, talk about the increasing pressure from society to be more sustainable and their concerns, uh, what, what, that, what effect that would have on their uh, farm income and profitability. I think we have to remember that, uh, particularly in Northwest Europe, uh, dairy farming is family farming. So uh, those farms are in the family for 10 generations. And uh, uh, farmers find it very important that their uh, next generation and the generation afterwards will also have a farm to look after. We classified all 43 thousand cows into classes of lifetime daily yield and estimated cost and income. Break-even point was at 14 kilograms per day of lifetime. Farms in Germany currently are at 14 kilograms on average. If they would be, uh, if they would like to be efficient in future, they should uh, reach 15 or better 20 kilograms per daily lifetime. Efficient farms had less callings in first lactation. So naturally, it is said that dairy cows can survive up to about 20 years old, but dairy cows on farms almost never get that old. They are culled for production reasons often. Some of that is because they leave because the cow really fails. If we look at culling statistics in the US, then we see that our cows stay three lactations on average. I do believe, you know, there's, uh, there's uh, an opportunity again to, to apply some solid economics and especially break the idea to um, that, you know, uh, that the younger cow pushes out the older cow. My presentation will be about the transition period. My group and I have been reevaluating uh, traditional dogmas that explain transition cow failures. And in particular, we are questioning the idea that high NEFAs, hyperketonemia, and hypocalcemia are causing problems. We believe that most of the negative consequences in the transition period actually our response of immune activation. This abrupt change of, of a high forage diet to a high concentrate diet, and trying to identify where in the gastrointestinal tract this inflammation is coming from. So obviously uh, it could come from the rumen, but we're thinking more and more that it's coming from the small and large bowel. The real reason why she has a, she's not eating and she's hyperketonemic is because immune activation is clamping her appetite. The other cow though, she has high ketones, She's eating like a champion. She's producing large quantities of milk. She, her ears are good and they're perky. She does not have a fever. Right? She's, she's the healthiest cow in the herd, in my opinion. And you know, leave her alone. We now recognize that uh, proper gut health is essential both for overall health and performance of our animals. 
if we have issues at the intestinal level, not only digestion and absorption are going to go wrong, we now recognize there are multiple functions of the intestine that will be also affected, like immune function, metabolism, etc. And this is likely due to this uh, high bypass uh, starch we were talking about. So if we think about the loose feces, the frothy feces, the mucin casts, these are indeed symptoms of hindgut acidosis, uh, probably subsequent to rumen acidosis. So uh, we actually uh, believe that this is a window of opportunity for intervention, that by uh, utilizing strategies targeting specifically the hindgut, uh, we have room to improve both the health and the performance of our animals. So if you want to have more lactations, you have to keep your cows healthy. So you have to break through tunnel vision and open your eyes and prevent disease. It's about look, think and act. So first of all, for feeding, you need 75 centimeter feed space that every cow can eat at the same time. For resting, you need a soft deep bed that the cows can rest for 14 hours. Stress-free calving, you need a stress-free calving line for two weeks before calving that the cows can be completely relaxed and calf without any stress. Well, the average lactation in the Netherlands is 3.6. It's the highest in the world uh, uh, for, for house systems, uh, where they don't have full grazing systems. And uh, the average in the world, I estimate, for 2.3, 2.4. In uh, Holland, the top 1% is on five lactations. <laughs>